They said, Johnny, you're going to the butcher shop. I said, butcher shop? What do you mean? What do you mean am I going to the butcher shop? What, are you going to house me in the kitchen? I was 16 years old, and I was uh, arrested for gun possession. And if you're wondering why a 16-year-old would be carrying a gun, it's because in my neighborhood, we cannot you know, call police officers. We find our ways. We find ways to police ourselves. And there I was, sitting in Rikers Island. And, uh, I always heard about Rikers Island, but I had never been there. And the correction officer says, Perez, you're going to the butcher shop. I said, well, I didn't know that they had mattresses inside of the kitchen. He said, no, the butcher shop is actually the housing area in which you're going to. I said, well, why, did it, why do they call it the butcher shop? He said, well, they call it the butcher shop because this is where most of, a sla most of the slashings in this jail happen. I don't know what was more disturbing to me at that time. I don't know if it was the fact that this information was coming from a correction officer or the fact that he said it with a smile on his face. So when I got there, if you've never been to jail, you, you, you would be surprised to know, or well, not surprised to know, but um, if you're not gang affiliated, then you're gonna, have a hard, you're gonna have a hard time in jail and in prison. And I was not gang affiliated. And at the time, Rikers Island was uh, a place where uh, you, will, where, where every, almost everyone was gang affiliated. And as a result, I found myself having to fight a lot. I fought for my commissary. I fought for my, to keep my sneakers. I fought to keep the jacket that I had. But more important, I fought for my humanity, my dignity, my, my, my sense of self-worth, my sanity. And I even fought for the phone. Because see, if you're not gang affiliated, then you can't use certain phone. See, this phone belongs to the Bloods. This phone belongs to uh, the, the Crips. This phone belongs to the Latin Kings. And you, since you're neither of them, you can't use the phone. Well, I need to call my lawyer. Well, I'm sorry, you cannot use the phone. In fact, if you want to use the phone, you have to pay to use the phone. I swung on him and hit him first. Later on, the, 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 the hearing officer said, well, why'd you swing on him? See, and I knew that I could not really explain why exactly that I swung on him. I, can't, I couldn't understand, I couldn't explain to him that if, if, if I had allowed that to happen, that I would even have even more problems down the line. That, you know, uh, I only weighed about 175 pounds, and this person had to weigh at least 200 pounds. And more importantly, I couldn't explain to him how I needed to call my lawyer because I don't understand anything about the legal system that I was about to enter. So at 16 years old, I was sentenced to 60 days in solitary confinement for having a fight in Rikers Island. And when you're there, it's quiet. It gets so quiet that you can hear your heart beat. Sometimes it gets so loud from the cacophony of different people just yelling, screaming, laughing, singing, crying. The cell is small, so small that if I stretch both of my hands out, I can touch both walls. It gets so hot in the summer that the walls start to sweat. It gets so cold in the winter that you try to cover yourself with the two blankets they give you, but even that's not enough. So you put all your clothes on, and even that's not enough. You try to put your head underneath the covers, but you're woken up every hour on the hour because for security reasons, the correction officer needs to see flesh to make sure that you, es that you didn't escape from a cell in which there is no escaping from. You try to look out the window, but the cell doesn't have no window. You haven't seen the sun in about 60 days. There's no mirror inside of the cell, so you forget what you look like. And then you get a visit. But because you were the aggressor, that means that you have to be handcuffed at the waist during a visit. And that was hard. Because see, I had to explain to my mother why it was that I was handcuffed at the waist. I had to explain to her why I could not hug her. And for me, I couldn't understand. See, I couldn't understand why I was not allowed to hug the same woman who had pushed me into existence. I could not understand what I had did so wrong to be able to put me in a space where I had to constantly, constantly, I either slept all day, cried all night, where I asked myself why, where I recited every lyrics of every song that I've ever heard, where I, I fantasized about what I would do if I won the lotto. How I would buy, how I would bail everyone out of, correct, out, of, out, of, out of Rikers Island, how I would somehow buy Rikers Island and fire every single correction officer. And then I also couldn't understand why the first two weeks of my time there, I, 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 could not, I, I was not given any food. Later on, I came to understand that the person who was giving out the food was another person who was doing time just like me, and he belonged to the same gang of the person who I fought, and therefore, his retaliation was not to give me breakfast and lunch for the first two weeks. And I couldn't tell the correctional officer because in jail or in prison or in any correctional setting, you cannot tell on someone 
Because once you're labeled a snitch, then you're more likely to be, than be victimized. You're more likely to have this kind of treatment perpetuated throughout your entire sentence. And then eventually, one day, they open a gate and they let you out. And you come back into the same society in which you left and everyone just keeps on as if nothing happened. And you don't really understand how it damaged you until you become older, until later on you get arrested at 21 years old and you, you are eventually sentenced to 15 years in prison and you end up doing three years in solitary confinement. And you try to make sense of it. But sometimes you, don't, you can't make sense of it. So you rely on the experience and you share your story to raise awareness. And you say, yeah, I did have something to do with that. And yes, I do take responsibility. And yes, I do take remorse. But we also have to look at the environmental factors of why I did what I did. And on the surface, it looks like robbery. But then upon closer inspection, it's a criminal solution to poverty. And then you hope, and you hope that when you share your story, that it allows people to, 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 to practice empathy and to place themselves in your shoes and wonder what would they do if they were you.